Hi guys, it's Adam Muller from MyProjects.ie and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Kruska Wireless test. First, why would you use Kruska Wireless? The first thing you need to understand is that Kruska Wireless is the non-parametric equivalent of your one-way ANOVA. And the reason you can use uh, Kruska Wireless instead of one-way ANOVA is if your data fails certain assumptions of using ANOVA, some of them could be that your data is not normally distributed or your data has outliers or you fail the homogeneity test of variance. So in that case, Kruska Wireless would be the way to go. But to use the Kruska Wireless test also, your data has to pass the assumption that the distribution for each of your group, in this case, each of our store, has to be similar. So the distribution of spending for store 1 compared to the distribution of spending for store 2 and compared to the distribution for spending for store 3 has to be similar. And the way to do this is to run the homogeneity of variance test for non-parametric data, which I'm going to show you how to run now. The first thing you have to do is get the spending rank. So we want to rank the respondent based on their spending. So how you would do that is go to transform and rank cases. So you can put in your spending, which is the variable we're interested in now, and just click OK. And now you should have a rank. So for people that spend 10 euro, the rank is 2.5. For people that spend 15 euro, the rank is 6. For people that spend 20 euro, the rank is 13. So it's ranking them in the order of the spending. So as you increase, in your spending your rank is definitely going to increase so the second thing we are going to do is get the spending difference the mean difference for your spending so how you're going to do that is go to data and go down to aggregate and what the aggregate will do is that it will calculate the the spending mean for each of your respondent and you will see the difference in each of the stores we put in the spending Spending is going to be the summaries of variable and the store will be the break variable, which is the uh, independent variable we are interested in. And you can just run the test. Now, you should have the spending mean. You can see that the mean for store 1 is 15.73, the mean for store 2 is 27.33, and the mean for store 3 is 40.67. Once you have it that way, now you're ready to actually calculate the difference between the rank and the spending mean. And that it's the difference that we're going to use to run the homogeneity of variance test for non-parametric data, which is the assumption that the distribution for each of our group, in our case, each of our store must be similar. To do that, you go to transform and compute variable and the target variable now is going to be called the absolute difference we call that the absolute difference we don't have the function for absolute difference here but you can just write it down it's abs absolute difference and you can put in your bracket so what you want to do is is subtract the rank of spending insert there minus the spending mean to get the absolute difference. Now that you have it like that, you can run the test and you should get the difference. So here's the absolute difference. The absolute difference is what we would use to run the homogeneity of variance test. What you can do now is go to analyze, compare mean, and use the one way ANOVA. In the dependent list, you put in your absolute diff score and your factor variable is gonna be the store and you can run the test. In the result, what you hope to get is a significant value that is greater than 0 0.05, which indicates that the distribution for each of your store is similar, which is what we want. So now that we passed the test of the homogeneity of variance for non-parametric data, we can now run the Kruska Wallis test. To run the Kruska Wallis test, you select Analyze non-parametric test, legacy dialog, and k-independent samples. In the k-independent sample, you put your spending in the test variable list and your store, which is store one, store two, store three, you have to define the range, which is one minimum and maximum is three, and you click continue. Then you can select okay. Now, here is our Kruska Wallis 
test. And this chi square for our spending is 37, and our significant value is 0 0.000, which is less than 0 0.05, which indicates that there is a statistically significant difference in the spending of the customer depending on the store the visit. And the way we can calculate the effect size for this is using the chi square value. I pull out my calculator. We want to calculate the effect size. You're going to get that chi square score 37.1018. Divide that by n minus 1, which is in our case 45 minus 1, which is 44. So we would get the partial ether square score otherwise known as the effect size score. We have an effect size of 0 0.84, which means that 84% of the variability in spending was accounted for by the store that the customer visits. And it's a very large effect size. So depending on the store you visit, you are likely to spend more money. And uh, just to let you know that this data was actually uh, manipulated, I inputted this data myself just for the purpose of this test, just to show you how you can run the uh, Kruskowalis test. So we now know the effect size for the analysis. Now, here's where the problem lies. Your Kruskowalis test is an omnibus test, which means it doesn't actually tell you where the difference lies, but it tells you that there is a statistically significant difference. But we can know if the difference is between store one and store two, or is it between store one and store three, or is it between store two and store three. But now we're going to run the omnibus post hoc test. What you want to do now is select cases. You can either use the select cases button that's on your menu tab here, or you can go to data and select cases, whichever one is more convenient for you. I'm aware that some people don't have the select case here in the older version of the SPSS. So you can click on select cases. And what we're interested in is selecting the if condition. We want to compare for each of our store. For now, we're interested in comparing store one and store two to see if they are statistically significantly different. So store one or store two. So that's the one we're interested in right now. So store one or store two equals to two. And we click on continue. Once we have it like that, you would see that and click OK. You will see that SPSS has removed your store three because we just told SBSs that we're interested in comparing the spendings of store one and store two to see if they are statistically significantly different. What you're going to do now is run the Kruskowalis test again, analyze non-parametric test, legacy dialogue, and go into K independent sample. Here, what we're going to change now is we want to compare the difference between store one and store two, and you click continue and select okay we can see that there's a big difference in the main rank of store one in comparison to store two and our significant value of 0 0.001 is uh, less than 0 0.05 which means that there, there's a statistically significant difference in the spending between store one and store two and the chi square is 21 again we can calculate the effect size we're going to put in the 21.98 Five. So we divide it by n minus 1. So our n is 30. 30 minus 1 is 29. And we get 0 0.75, which means that uh, our partial eta square or effect size is 75.8%. In layman's term, it means that 75.8% of the variability in spending was accounted for by the store 
location. For people that go to store two, they spend more money compared to the people that visit store one. So now that we've calculated the difference between store one and store two, we were interested in comparing store one and store three as well to see if that is also statistically significant. We select the if, change that to three. Now we are looking at three. We click on continue and click on OK. We go to analyze non-parametric test, legacy dialog, and we go down to k-independent samples. So here we're going to change that to 1 versus 3 to compare 1 and 3 spending to see if that is also significant. It's also significant and we have a chi-square score of 22 and our significant value is less than 0 0.001. But the last one is to compare store 2 and store 3. You go again, you select your case here, or for those who don't have it on the menu tab, you can go into data, select cases, and click on the if, and then change the store 1 to 2, so we can compare store 2 and 3. And don't forget, this sign actually means or, so store 2 or store 3. We go on continue and click OK, just like we did earlier. Now we go into analyze, non-parametric test, legacy dialog, k-independent sample, we change that to Start two and three and click OK. That is also significant, but in this case, the chi square is actually lower compared to the difference between our store one and three, which is 22, and the difference between our store one and two, which is 21. Actually, the highest effect size for this test is the one for store one and three. That's where the highest significant difference lie because you can see the spending is 8 compared to 23 here and here it's 8.93 and this is 22.07 this is how to run your Crisco Wallis test and it's very straightforward if you know exactly what you're doing for hours what we were doing initially was to compare store 1 and store 2 and store 3 spending to find out if there's a statistically significant difference and the significant value was less than 0 0.05 even less than 0 0.001 which means that uh, there's a difference in spending depending on the store you visit but like i said in the beginning uh, kruskowalis test is an omnibus test it tells you there is a significant difference but it doesn't tell you where the difference is hence we, we ran the postdoc test to find out where the difference lies the first test was to compare store one and store two and we actually found out that there was a statistically significant difference between store one and store two because our significant value was less than 0 0.05 and there was this difference between store one and three and also, there was a difference between store 2 and 3. Now you know how to run the Kruskawalis test in SPSS. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. And for those of you who struggle with writing up your results, I've also included a write-up for this uh, analysis in the blog post we wrote for this uh, video. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Leave a comment below if you have any questions, and I'll be happy to answer your questions.